Number 50. Which is denser at the same temperature and pressure? Dry air or air that's saturated with water vapor and explain? Okie dokie. So I guess what we'll do to illustrate this is I'll draw a little line down here and we're going to talk about basically dry air. And then we have the air saturated. So I'll just say air with water vapor H2O. That's water. Vapor just means that it's a gas. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a container. Look at that lovely drawing. And maybe I'll just copy this and bring this over here. And we have the same container, right? Okay. Now, at the same temperature and the same pressure, right, if we look through our PV, and I'll, maybe I'll put it down here, PV equals NRT. If we have the same temp, so we don't care about this, and we have the same pressure, right, basically the N value is going to stay the same. So for each one of these, that's why I drew the same exact container because we have to fit the same number of moles in here for dry air and air with H2O. Now just know that air is mostly consisted of two things, N2 and O2. So maybe I'll say that my N2 is a... Uh, blue circle and my O2 is a green circle. So in this, let's just say that we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five blue circles. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, right? Now with air with H2O, since it's still air, right? And maybe I'll do that. Since it's still air, it still has N2, and it still has O2, because that's the main two components of air. So I'm still going to have my blue circles, and I'm still going to have my uh, green circles, but now it's humid, right? And that's why it has water vapor in it. So when it's saturated with water vapor, this is just when you have a really, really muggy day outside, because you now have H2O gas, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that H2O gas is going to be a yellow circle. Now remember, the same amount of moles have to be in the other container. So I drew 10 circles here, 5 and 5, so there still has to be 10 total circles. So what's going to happen is if we're going to increase or add H2O, let's just say that I added 3 of these, right? We would have to drop some of these. So now maybe I'll say, okay, there's three total circles. So maybe there's four, five, six, right? And then maybe for the other one, we'll say seven, eight, nine, ten. But the, the, the idea here is that you are increasing H2O while you're dropping your uh, N2 and O2. Now for this, we now have to link this to our formula that has to do with density and pressures, which is this one, right? PMM equals DRT. Now, just like they said here, the pressure and the temperature is exactly the same. So bye-bye to the pressure, bye-bye to the temp. And remember, the R value is constant as well. So I can kind of get rid of that. So we can make a relationship between mm, which is molar mass, and d, which is density. Now, since they are on opposite sides, and the relationship is that they're equal to each other, if the molar mass increases, what's going to happen to the density? The density is going to increase. And if the molar mass drops, the density is going to drop. So in this case, they are a direct relationship, right? Because if one goes up, the other one goes up. So this is a direct relationship. 
Now, in order to find out which one is denser, that means that we're increasing the density. So if we're increasing the density, that means that the molar mass just has to be larger, right? So now if we come back over here, I mean, we could either do a couple of things. We can basically add up the total molar mass of each one of them, but just know that N2, N2's molar mass is two times 14.01, uh, right? That's on the periodic table. So that's 28.02 grams per mole. And O2, if I pull this maybe a little bit to the side, let's see, there we go. O2's molar mass is 32. Now, we have high molar masses over here, right? So it would be the same for over here. But now what's the, what's the addition on this side? Yeah, we're now adding H2O. So H2O on the periodic table, 1.008 times 2 plus 16, if we just want to get it like exact, I get 18. 0 0.016 grams per mole. But do you see here that we had to add in a lower molar mass than this one, right? All of these, 28 and 32, they're higher than the water. The water is the lowest one. So if you're removing high molar masses and replacing them with the water vapor, which has a lower molar mass, what did you really do to the molar mass? Yeah, by adding the water vapor, you dropped the molar mass. This one would have a lower molar mass. And this one, since it didn't have any H2O, right, and you just had higher numbers than what water is, this one would have a higher molar mass. So if that's the case, which one is denser? Yeah, it's this one. It's the dry air because it's a direct relationship. Higher molar mass, higher density. So dry air, whoop, dry air is denser. It has more density. And that is the final answer to this question. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully the drawing, you know, did its justice. Uh, let me know in the comments, all right? Give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for uh, viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. If not, that's okay. All right, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.